I think you've probably heard the word divide before, where someone tells you to divide something up, divide the money between you and your brother, or, or between uh, you and your buddy. And it essentially means to cut up something. So let me write down the word divide. Divide. So if we had, let's say that I have four quarters. Let me see, do my best to draw the quarters. If I have four quarters just like that, oh, you know, that's my rendition of George Washington on the quarters. And let's say there's two of us, and we're going to divide the quarters between us. So this is me right here. Let me try my best to draw me. So that's me right there. Oh, let's see, I have a lot of hair. And then this is you right there. Uh, do my best. Say you're bald, but you have sideburns. Maybe that looks more, let's see, maybe you have a little bit of a beard. I don't want to get too focused on the drawing. And so that's you, that's me. And we're going to divide these four quarters between the two of us. So notice, we have four quarters, four quarters. And we're going to divide between the two of us. There are two of us. Two of us. And I want to stress the number two. So we're going to divide four quarters by two. We're going to divide it between the two of us. And you've probably done something like this. What, what happens? Well, each of us are going to get two quarters. So let me divide it. We're going to divide it into two. Essentially, what I do, do is I take the four quarters, and I divide it into two equal groups. Two equal groups. And that's what division is. We cut up this group of quarters into two equal groups. So when you divide four quarters into two groups, so this was four quarters right there. Let me. So that was four quarters. And you want to divide it into two groups. This is group one. Group one right here. And this is group two right here. How many numbers? are in each group, or how many quarters are in each group? Well, in each group, I have one, two quarters. I need to use a brighter color. I have one, two quarters in each group. One quarter and two quarters in each group. So to write this out mathematically, I think this is something that you've done probably as long as you've been uh, splitting money between you and your siblings and your, your buddies. Actually, let me scroll over a little bit so you can see my entire picture. So what? how do we write this mathematically? We can write. We can write that 4 divided by, so this 4, let me use the right colors. So this 4, which is this 4, divided by the two groups. So the two groups, these are the two groups, group 1, and this is group 2 right here. So divided into two groups, or into two collections, 4 divided by 2 is equal to, when you divide 4 by into two groups, each group is going to have two quarters in it. It's going to be equal to 2. And I just wanted to use this example because I want to show you that division is something that you've been using all along. And another important, I guess, takeaway or thing to realize about this is on some level, this is the opposite of multiplication. If I said that I had two groups, if I said that I had two groups of two quarters, I would multiply the two groups times the two quarters each, times the two quarters each, and I, I would say I would then have four quarters. So on some level, these are saying the same thing. But just to make it a little bit more concrete in our head, let's do a couple of more examples. Let's do a bunch of more examples. So let's write down, what is 6 divided by, I'll try to keep it nice and color coded, 6 divided by 3. What is that equal to? Let's just draw 6 objects. They can be anything. Let's say I have 6 six bell peppers. And I won't take too much trouble to draw them. Well, that, that's not what a bell pepper looks like, but you get the idea. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to divide it by three. And one way that we can think about that is that means I want to divide my six bell peppers into three equal groups of bell peppers. You could kind of think of it if three people are going to share these bell peppers, how many do each of them get? So let's divide it into three groups. So that's our six bell peppers. I'm going to divide it into three groups. So the best way to divide it into three groups is I could have one group right there, two groups, 
or the second group right there, and then the third group. And then each group, each group will have exactly how many bell peppers? They'll have one, two, one, two, one, two bell peppers. So six divided by three is equal is equal to two. So the best way, or one way to think about it, is that you divided the six into three groups. Now, you could view that a, com uh, a slightly different way, although it's, it's not completely different, but it's a good way to think about it. You could also think of it as 6 divided by 3. And once again, let's say I have, uh, well, let's say I have raspberries now. Easier to draw. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, and here instead of draw, instead of dividing it into three groups like we did here, right? This was one group, two group, three groups. Instead of dividing into three groups, what I want to do is say, well, if I'm dividing six divided by three, I want to divide it into groups of three, not into three groups. I want to divide it into groups of three. So how many groups of three am I going to have? Well, let me let me draw some groups of three. So that is one group of three. And that is two groups of three. That is two groups of three right there. So if I take six things and I divide them into groups of three, I will end up with one, two groups. So that's another way to think about division. And this is an interesting thing. When you think about these two relations, you'll see a relationship between six divided by three and six divided by two. Let me do that right here. What is six? divided by 6 divided by 2 when you think of it in this context right here. 6 divided by 2, when you do it like that, let me draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When we think about 6 divided by 2 in terms of dividing it into two groups, what we can end up is we could have one group like this, and then one group like this, and each group will have three elements. It'll have three things in it. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. Or you could think of it the other way. You could say that 6 divided by 2 is you're taking six objects, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and you're dividing it into groups of two, where each group has two elements. And that, on some level, is an easier thing to do. If each group has two elements, well, that's one right there. Uh, I could even They don't even have to be nicely uh, ordered. This could be one group right there. And that could be the other group right there. I don't have to draw them all stacked up. These are just groups of two. But how many groups do I have? I have one, two, three. I have three groups. But notice something. It's no coincidence that 6 divided by 3 is 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. Let me write that down. We get 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. And 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. And the reason why these you see this relation where you can kind of swap this 2 and this 3 is because 2 times 3 is equal to 6. If I have, if I have let's say I have two groups of 3. Let me draw two groups of 3. So that's one group of 3. And then here's another group of 3. Right? That's one group of 3. And that's another group of 3. So 2 groups of 3 is equal to 6. 2 times 3 is equal to 6. Or you could think of it the other way. If I have three groups of 2, so that's one group of 2 right there. I have another group of 2 right there. And then I have a third group of 2 right there. What is that equal to? Three groups of 2, 3 times 2, that's also equal to 6. So 2 times 3 is equal to 6. 3 times 2 is equal to 6. We saw this in the multiplication video that the order doesn't matter. But that's the reason why if you want to divide it, if you want to go the other way, if you have six things and you want to divide it into groups of two, you get three. If you have six and you want to divide it into groups of three, you get two. Let's do a couple of more problems. And I think it'll really make sense about what division is all about. So let's do, let's do nine. Let's do an interesting one. Let's do nine divided by Four. So if we think about 9 divided by 4, let me draw 9 objects. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now when you divide by 4, I'm going to think in this, in this, for this problem, I'm going to think about it into dividing it into groups of 4. 
So if I want to divide it into groups of four, let me try doing that. So here is one group of four. I just picked any of them, right, like that. That's one group of four. Then here's another group of four right there. And then I have this leftover thing. Maybe we could call it a remainder, where I don't have, I can't divide, put this one into a group of four. When I'm dividing by four, I can only put, I can only cut up the nine into groups of four. So the answer here, and this is a new concept for you, maybe, nine divided by four is going to be two groups, right? I have one group here, another group here, and then I have a remainder of one. I have one left over that I wasn't able to do with. Remainder. A remainder, that says remainder 1. 9 divided by 4 is 2 remainder 1. If I asked you what 12 divided by 4 is, let me do 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So let me write that down. 12 divided by 4. So I want to dry, divide these 12 objects, maybe they're apples or plums, and divide them into groups of four. So let me see if I can do that. So this is one group of four, just like that. This is another group of four, just like that. And this is pretty straightforward. And then I have a third group of four, just like that. And there's nothing left over like I had before, that I can exactly divide 12 objects into three groups of four, right? One, two, three groups of four. So twelve divided by four is equal to is equal to three. And we could do the exercise that we saw in the previous video. What is twelve divided by three? Let me do a new color. Twelve divided by three. Now based on what we learned so far, we say, oh well that should just be four, because three times four is twelve. But let's prove it to ourselves. So one, two, three, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's divide it into groups of three. And I'm going to make them a little strange looking, just so you say, see that you don't always have to do it into nice, clean columns. So that's a group of three right there. 12 divided by three. Let's see, here is a, here's another group of three, just like that. And then maybe I'll take this group of three, like that. And then I'll take this group of three. There's obviously a much easier way of dividing it up than doing these weird L-shaped things. But I want to show you it doesn't matter. You're just dividing it into groups of three. And how many groups do we have? We have one group. Then we have our second group right here. And then we have our third group right there. And then we have, let me do it in a new color. And then we have our fourth group right there. So we have exactly four groups. And when I say there was an easier way to divide, the easier way was obviously, or maybe not obviously, if I wanted to divide these into groups of three, I could have just done one, two, three, four groups of three. Either of these, I'm dividing the 12 objects into packets of three. You can imagine them that way. Let's do another one that maybe has a remainder. Let's see. What is? What is 14 divided by divided by 5? So let's draw 14 objects. 14 objects. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 objects. And I'm going to divide into groups of 5. So let me draw, well, the easiest thing is there's one group right there, two groups right there. But then this last one, I only have four left. So I can't make another group of five. So the answer here is I can make two groups of five, and I'm going to have a remainder, r for remainder, of four. Two remainder four. Now, once you get enough practice, you're not always going to be wanting to draw these circles and dividing them up like that, although that would not be incorrect. So another way to think about this type of problem is to say, well, 14 divided by five, how do I figure that out? And actually, another way of writing this, and no, no harm in showing you, I could say 14 divided by 5 is the same thing as 14 divided by this sign right here, divided by 5. And what you do is you say, well, let's see, how many times does 5 go into 14? Well, let's see, 5 times, and you kind of do a multiplication tables in your head. 5 times 1 is equal to 5. 5 times 2 is equal to 10. So that's still less than 14. So 5 goes at least 2 times. 
5 times 3 is equal to 15. Oh, that's bigger than 14, so I have to go back here. So 5 only goes 2 times. So it goes 2 times. 2 times 5 is 10. And then you subtract. You say 14 minus 10 is 4. And that's the same remainder as right here. Well, I could divide 5 into 14 exactly 2 times, which would get us 2 groups of 5, which is essentially just 10. But we still have the 4 left over. We still have the 4 left over just like that. Let me do a couple of more, just to really make sure you, you get this stuff really, 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 really well. So let's say that I have, well, let me write it in that notation. Let's say I would do 8 divided by 2. And I could also write this as 8, so I, I want to know what that is. That's a question mark. I could also write this as 8 divided by 2. And the way I do either of these, I'll draw the circles in the second, but the way I do it without doing a second, without drawing the circles, I say, well, 2 times 1 is equal to 2. So that definitely goes into 8. But maybe I can think of a larger number that goes into, uh, that when I multiply it by 2 still goes into 8. 2 times 2 is equal to 4. That's still less than 8. So 2 times 3 is equal to 6, still less than 8. 2 times, 2 times, oh, something weird happened with my pen. 2 times 4 is exactly equal to 8. So 2 goes into 8 four times. So I could say 2 goes into 8 four times. Or 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. And we can even draw our circles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I drew a messy on purpose. And let's divide them into groups of 2. I have one group of 2, two groups of 2, three groups of 2, four groups of 2. So if you have eight objects, divide them into groups of 2, you have four groups. So 8 divided by 2 is 4, 8 divided by 2 is 4. Hopefully you found that helpful.